Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. When we say that prayer, hopefully we've got it memorized now. Psalm 19, verse 14. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, of all of our hearts together, be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. And we go on to the theme of the book of Romans, chapter 1, verse 17. I'm not ashamed of, not my simple words, but the power of God, for it is the salvation to all who hear. May these words now bring comfort and strength. God loves to bind our lives together by the word of Christ. Humanity struggles to break down walls only to find more walls being built. The resurrection of Christ, however, has forever changed this world. Jesus' cross holds out the victory that pulls down one wall after another. Praise the Lord. We have the strength in our Lord and Savior. We look now at another story during this Easter season. The wall between the Jew and the Gentile that was far more than just a cultural clash. In our text, Peter confesses that at the house of Cornelius, we you yourselves know that it is unlawful for the Jew to associate with or to visit anyone of another nation. But, as Peter continues, God has shown me that I should not call any person common or unclean. There was no hiding behind walls, even with the law. Everything is centered on Jesus Christ, who calls all to repent and believe in him. From this reading in Acts 10, we learn that in Caesarea, there was a man named Cornelius, a centurion, a devout man who feared God. God had sent him a vision that he was to send men to John to bring Simon called Peter. Cornelius sent two servants to find Peter. The Lord also sent a vision to Peter. Peter was to eat things that the Jews had called unclean, so they did not eat them. And while Peter was thinking of this, the Spirit said that there would be men looking for you. Go with them, because I have sent them for you. And Peter went with them to Cornelius' house. Cornelius bows down to Peter. Peter says, wait. Stand up. I, too, am a man. Then, as mentioned before, he said, Now you know that it is unlawful for the Jew to associate with or to visit with anyone from another nation. But God has shown me that I should not call any person common or unclean. So when I was sent for, I came. Cornelius said, well, four days ago, I was praying in my house at this time, and a man stood before me in bright clothing and said, Cornelius, your prayer has been heard, and you are remembered by God. Send for Simon, called Peter. There was quite a separation between the Jews and any nation, but now God would break down that <laughs> separating wall. Father loves to bind all together in his word for our one salvation. For as Acts 10, 34 says, God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. Peter reveals the love the heavenly Father has for Cornelius and all those in his house. He does this by opening his mouth out of love for those unloved by the Jews. Truly, I understand that 
God shows no partiality. He does this by showing that the word given to Israel is God's love for the Gentiles. We reveal that the love the Father has for all people is without exception. He opens our mouths with love to those outside the walls that are built in this life. Just think of all the bullying, belittling, shunning, or degrading that is done in our sinful world. God shows that his word of love for the church means peace, real peace. Binding all people together in his one for all salvation. As our first John 5 text says, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God. And everyone who loves the Father loves whoever has been born of him. Peter declared this love from Jesus to the Gentiles. Jesus' life as the word made flesh was a perfect expression of love. He was always doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. Then Jesus' death was the ultimate act of love to save sinners, you and me. His enemies put him to death by hanging him on the tree, but God raised him to life on the third day. Now, Jesus is to be the judge of the living and the dead. But for all who believe in him, the judgment will be forgiveness. Forgiveness of sins and eternal life. Jesus loves to speak his word of his love so that everyone may be bound to it. Jesus' love is the gift that he gives to the world. As he told his disciples, as the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. Jesus' death is the cure of life, covering the multitude of sins. This love means forgiveness for every sin of the whole world. As judge, Jesus demands that all believe in his word of forgiveness. For it does not bind all people, it does bind all people to him forever, for eternity. And this is the victory that we have that has overcome the world, our faith. As that first John 5 says so clearly, the Holy Spirit showed Peter the love he was to have for the Gentiles. It goes beyond the walls built by man. For the Holy Spirit fell on all who heard the word. They believed and responded in faith. Love meant Peter was not to get in the way of God's work by the gospel. The miracle of his hearers speaking in tongues confirmed the greater miracle. So Peter said, can anyone withhold water for baptizing these people? who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have, we see that way the same love of the Holy Spirit shared around the word and sacrament. It comes to us as a work of God, able to give faith in Jesus. As he finishes that text for today, all three agree the Spirit and the Word water and holy baptism, and the blood and holy communion. These three agree. 1 John 5, verse 8. Right behavior by the standards of men still builds walls, but a right belief in Jesus entrusts us to these commandments. His forgiveness and his faithfulness Everyone sees him. Yes, 
God's loves to bind our lives together by the word of Christ. The risen Christ breaks down all the walls we put up and replaces them with salvation for every soul. Salvation unbroken by sin, death, and the devil. And may we daily live in repentance to him for his love unites the baptized in the most magnificent way. And it fills us every day with a peace that surpasses all human understanding as we keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.